Here I am recording with the Shure SM57. Right now there is no audio compression or processing at all. Basically this is how it's coming directly out of the mic through an XLR cable into USB drive into my computer where I am recording. Now let's try it with processing. Now I have audio processing turned on. My voice is definitely notably brighter now. I have an equalizer set up right now through my computer. Basically, what this is doing is it will allow the frequencies to be adjusted. So again, it's not the same thing as the straight audio. What I'm going to have now is that I'm cutting certain low frequencies that I don't like the way they sound. And other frequencies are affected in order to brighten my vocal. But that's not really the topic of this this recording. So let's get into the microphone a little bit, shall we? Now, it has a good sound for sure for a microphone of $100 and definitely is very reliable. Perhaps if you had better preamps than I'm currently working on, you might be able to even get a better, more powerful sound because I will admit I am driving it pretty heavily right now. It is almost up to all the way. It's actually at unity with its sound, which is that the sound is not being increased or decreased. Usually on an, an audio console with built-in preamps or any other preamp-based console, you won't have to do that. You'll reduce sound. To put things in perspective, this is what your average computer built-in microphone sounds like. Much less crisp, very um, noisy. Now, I can, there's some things that you can do about that noise, but you can definitely tell any microphone is going to make a major difference. But the SM57 definitely does cut, especially when it has its windscreen in use. Now, I am using it with the windscreen right now, but let's take a listen to it without the windscreen, see what difference that makes. Here I am speaking now without the windscreen. You might notice that you can hear more what are called plosives. Yeah, there you heard one there. A plosive is basically the sound that the puff of air that comes out of your mouth when you say certain sounds in English. You have P's and S's and a lot of things that make that noise that we overhear. And a microphone is going to often pick that up if it's just bare on the diaphragm, which is what we're getting here with the SM57. In essence... You um, would want a windscreen for the SM57 because unlike a lot of other popular microphones, there's not a built-in grill. If you think of certain other well-known microphones like the Shure SM58, for instance, they have that silver ball around the diaphragm. And essentially what that can do is it's going to reduce that extra noise that you have without the windscreen. Now let's put the windscreen back on again in perspective. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Now let's put the windscreen back on in perspective. See, you'd heard very little of the plosive noise. And what you're hearing is more so just my voice. The SM57, I really do think, is going to be great as a starting point for anyone who wants to get into podcasting or narration or anything on their own like that. I've actually used it as a recording means for some very amateur basic recordings. And again, having the White House as a primary location that it is still used, that is something that really sets a microphone apart because as much as I like a lot of those high-end microphones, I'm going to note that this $100 dynamic microphone is just good enough for the most powerful man in the entire world. And also, there's certainly been a level of persistence because this microphone's been around since... 1965. What other products can we think of that like were made in 1965 that are still made now and with functionally very minimal change? Yes, maybe they've changed some of the technology as far as how you have microphone input, but the basic concept is the same. It's the same product. One thing that's great about the SM57 is that you don't have to plug it into power. There's a concept known as phantom power. That's 48 volts of electricity that could be sent over your audio cable. A lot of microphones that are condenser microphones, which is a special type of microphone that actually requires an electrical current, those are going to require a special power supply. 
Now, most audio consoles, even analog and digital, are going to have phantom power built in. But in regards to getting up and going, it's just perfect for someone who's just beginning in the recording realm. Because you don't really need much extra equipment. You need something to plug it into your computer. And it works with any computer in theory. And as long as you have that equipment in place, much of which you can get very inexpensively on the internet, I'll have a link to that in this article, it's ultimately very straightforward in going about and just going from scratch. I could record with this right out of the box because I had the right equipment as far as plugging into the computer. No need for a fancy audio console, although I do love audio consoles. And there's no need either for any sort of fancy prerequisites that you would need for something like a, um, let's say, a Shure Beta 58 or any other condenser microphone. It requires power. So the SM57 is great for that purpose as well. It's just very easy to get started with. And as I'm sure you can tell, the sound on it is very is quite remarkable. Shure does make a great product here. Although I will admit that vocals are not its only area of expertise. The SM57 is very versatile and it's officially considered an instrument microphone which could make it perfect for the home recorder because if they only have to have one microphone for all their basic needs, especially if you're an in-home studio musician, you don't really have to worry about all the other microphones that one might need. In my personal experience, the 57 works great for a guitar or amplifier if you would like to use it that way. In essence, you would put a dynamic microphone like the SM57 right in front of the amp for a guitar, and that's how you would amplify it through a public address system. But Shorp does build it as being usable for both guitar and bass amps, although I personally, for a bass guitar, I would recommend a direct injection box as opposed to a microphone in front of the amp. It also works great as a microphone for drums because you can get a lot of those key sounds, and there's things that you can do, like apply certain audio effects to the actual track that can produce very reliable results in my in my experience. I will say though that there is one problem with using a cardioid mic like this in a lot of those band situations. As I mentioned in the review text, it has a heart shape around the diaphragm in essence. So it picks up around the front. That's where I'm speaking now, but I'm going to move to the side. I'm moving to the right-hand side, and I'm speaking right on the right-hand side of the microphone right now. Now, the sound isn't quite as nice as if I were to be speaking from the front. Let's move around to the front and over to the left-hand side of the microphone and try underneath and above. Here, you notice, though, that you can still hear me fairly well. I'm now speaking from directly behind the microphone. And most of what you were able to hear from me there was due to the reflections in the air and the room that I'm currently in. But as you heard, it's very tough to differentiate someone around you from behind. But getting back to the issue for band usage, let's say you have a jazz band. Because one time I was using an SM57 as one of my various microphones when I was making a jazz concert. And one problem I discovered that I hadn't anticipated was that the band leader would choose to have the drum set put right next to the grand piano and as an audio engineer ultimately you have to work with what you're given so what i had to do from that point forward was basically have to pull back the microphone on the piano until the drums weren't really playing as loud because i was getting all drum because the drums are so overwhelmingly loud than the grand piano is that my microphone aimed into the piano was picking up a lot of that outside noise and I, there are certain tools you can use to get rid of that, but it's very tough when it's other loud noises. It's easier to deal with that when it's just something that's a little more quiet. But getting back to its use as a vocal microphone, it, 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 in my opinion, I'd give the SM57 a solid 7 or 8 out of 10. There are better vocal microphones, and there are microphones that I would personally recommend over the SM57. But in my view, and especially for a beginner, it's perfect. Because a lot of people, when they're just getting started out, don't want to be spending $500 for a good microphone. And I'll admit, you can get a good microphone for under $500 as long as you're going wired. But this is still about half the price of some other really good microphones in the lead made by other companies like Audio-Technica or Shure or Sennheiser or Audix or any other audio companies. 
There is a reason that the SM57 has been in continuous production since the mid-1960s. I mean, for something to have such longevity, it must be worthwhile because, again, as I mentioned earlier, what technology are we really using from that time that's still around today? It seems to me that it's just something that I really, really would recommend to someone else who is trying to break into the space. So I definitely go ahead and purchase it on Amazon if that's something that you're interested in doing because you have my full recommendation in this one. Although I do hope to be reviewing some more higher-end microphones in the future so that you can get an idea and perspective on what we're working with. But again, to repeat from earlier, I'm, I'm going to leave it with a 7 out of 10, maybe a 7. Which for being under $200 is really, really a strong score. My next microphone review that I plan on putting up is going to be of a knockoff of the SM57. So not a counterfeit, because that is a big problem that people run into, but this is a knockoff. So it's not necessarily a microphone that's pretending to be the SM57, but ultimately in every way except for the high quality, it's trying to be the SM57. But stay tuned for that recording, because, I mean, maybe the SM57 is less worth it. Although I would like to look at it with an objective perspective, I tend to doubt. But we'll see. I'm very curious to receive that microphone. I'm going to be ordering it in a couple days, and I want to see what goes on with that. Now, I'm going to be signing off here. That is Mac on Mics reporting on the SM57, a great dynamic vocal mic for any of your vocal recording needs in addition to any of your instrumental recording needs. Definitely give this one a buy. Definitely check this one out. It's a great microphone to have in your arsenal, especially if you're just starting off. So thank you very much for listening and have a great day.